a dark, lonely night, somewhere in the middle of nowhere. We've taken pop sensation Girls Aloud away from their singing and dancing for one frightful night with ghost hunter extraordinaire Yvette Fielding. I've got to pick up for five. There's only four of you. Where's Nadine? She's too scared. She's not coming. She's tripping down. Where's she gone? What's going on? The girls are waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. What's the problem? I am just so, so scared. Scared of what? Ghosts, spirits, dead things, anything. <laughs> I tell you what, Nadine, you're going to have to pay the ferryman one day. Come on, get in. Tonight, Sarah. Kimberly, Nicola and Cheryl will put their beliefs and bravery to the ultimate test in three reputedly haunted locations and the outcome is jaw-dropping. Will the girls ever be the same again? Our girls had different views on the afterlife and paranormal activity before tonight and as a result of our challenge you will witness the amazing journey that each girl goes through what I am going to do whether you want it to happen or not is now I want to turn all the lights off oh god before I've always been like do they exist yeah they do no they don't whatever but now I now I'm more like they actually do <laughs> this is dead Seriously. <laughs> Why do you have to be like this? For the next two gripping hours, watch as we catch some unexplained phenomena on camera that leave the whole group utterly terrified. <gasps> Was that you? <laughs> What's with the look on her face? We're about to go to a few different haunted locations in a vet to see if we can find any ghosts or spirits. The vet, where we're going? She's not smoking to us. She knows. She's Do you know why she's not telling us? She knows that we're going to die if we find out where we're going. It'd be something we've never ever done as a band, and it would be um, something I can remember for the rest of my life. This is getting beyond a joke. Mm -hmm. I'm breaking. I'm one of these big mouths that will probably go, yeah, let's do it, come on, that's great, yeah, yeah, I'm well up for that. And I think I'm going to get there, and as, as it's been getting closer to the, when we're doing it, I think it's been getting a little bit more real. And so to our first location, Plaz Taig, an imposing Jacobean mansion set deep in the Welsh hills. This grand stately home has 400 years of history behind its walls. Many visitors have reported sightings of spirits and fled the grounds in fear. How will our girls fare tonight? Hello. 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 Welcome to Plaz Taig. We've been expecting you. Oh, Come on. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Bert. Hello. This is now where it all starts. You ready? I think so. Come on. As Yvette starts tonight's proceedings, we brought in expert psychologist Professor Jeffrey Beattie to analyse the girls' behaviour and reactions. He'll be watching their every move outside through specially rigged monitors in the taxi. Okay. 
just way to get a feel for this room. It was a courtroom. There was a very famous gentleman that actually was here. His name was Hanging Judge Jeffries. And he was basically, he travelled the country sentencing men, women and children to death. Children? Children. And he did it here, in this room. Why would you sentence a child to death? In those days they did. Through there is where he hanged them. Do you want to go forward in there? Do you want to stand here? No. Why not? Just I don't, stand I don't want to stand where they fell through. OK. Just... You know what happened there? Yeah. Yeah. So you're all right. Feeling absolutely fine. So they basically would have had a beam somewhere here. Obviously, it's not here now. And they would have tied it round their neck. They would have dropped the body through a hole in the floor. And they basically would have strangled to death. They didn't die instantly. It would have taken them a very long time for them to die. And the saying, pull the other one, actually comes from... They actually used to pull down on one of the legs to actually break the neck so that you would die a lot quicker. And that's where that saying, pull the other one, comes from. But the bodies would actually fall through this, this trap door that used to be here down at the bottom. The bodies were collected underneath in the room below, put in a cart and taken away. Sarah, do you want to come and stand here? Do you want to come and stand here? Come on, just stand there. Oh, I just don't like it. But explain why you don't like it. I just don't feel like... I feel like I'm standing on someone's grave. I'm going to call out because I could have sworn I just heard a, a knock, slight knocking. Please, can you knock if you can hear my voice? Please knock once for yes, twice for no. Are you female? Can you please knock out how many spirits there are here with us now, please? Two. Three. 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 Are we in any danger? Please knock once for yes, twice for no. Was the two? Was the two? Was the two? Because I heard one. I heard, I heard one. one. The first one was very faint. You're right. Yeah, I don't understand that. Okay. Do you want to come stand here? Oh, God. What? What's the relevance of one of us standing here? Just in case you might feel something, because at the end of the day, this is where where somebody died. Now. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Please, can you tell us how many spirits are here in the house? Please knock and tell us how many spirits there are here in the house. I got the line. Did you get two proofs to go? No, I got those two. Okay. All right. She says she gets fed up with people okay. feeding her. Can you please tell us, are you tired of people walking around your house trying to talk to you? Once for yes, twice for no. No. Aww. No. No, no, she's not. Okay. What's the case? What's that? Do you want to move on to the next room? You all right? Yeah. You okay? It's the realisation. Yeah. Okay. Even though they think this is a kind of pretty relaxing period, their emotions are starting to leak out and they're trying to do something about it. Cheryl's just adjusting her jacket. Whatever's being said is, is, is uh, clearly making them a little bit uncomfortable. Sarah's doing some wonderful, again, it looks like her preening it, looks as if she's smoothing her hair. Nothing to do with vanity whatsoever. It's an attempt to self comfort. Posture's really interesting. Nicola's got a kind of, they're very, very close bodily posture. Uh, Nicola's got this kind of hand to mouth movement which people use when, when they start to feel anxiety. The first room has shown lots of activity. Yvette believes up to ten spirits were apparently present. The ghost of one of the late owners, Sir John Trevor, his wife Elizabeth, and a young girl who allegedly died in suspicious circumstances are just a few reported spirits said to haunt Plaz Taig.
lots of different people have felt lots of different things in this room. Apparently the story goes that there was a woman here, this used to be her, her room, she had a child, she had a miscarriage. She still haunts this particular room and uh, particularly through as well in, into that bathroom. Now again, rappings have been heard in here as well and I'm hearing them now. Yeah. When I came in here, I, was that I you? thought of a king. <laughs> Was that you? I thought of a king. You thought of a king? Mm -hmm. That'd be interesting. I wonder why. I did hear that same nice then. Sometimes it's just a good thing just to stand in a room and just really listen. Because you get, you have to get yourself accustomed to the sounds. Now, do any of you want to ask out, or do you want me to ask yeah. out? Do you want me to do it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody, keep your feet still. Is there anybody here? If there is a woman present here. Touch me. Or me. Or Cheryl. Did you lose a child? What? Let's move into this room here. So we've got an interesting position here, which is Cheryl on her own. He's got a, a reasonably open posture. Nicola, Sarah and Kimberly all in a row. I've got closed postures all to different degrees and interestingly Sarah's is the most closed of the three. It's, it's interesting just seeing which of the pairs kind of go to go together here. Who's comforting who, what the social support network is in the group and Sarah very much grabbed Kimberly's arm so and uh, you know Kimberly very much was going into the house as, as the logical rational one. She's the one Sarah wants to be next. Sarah was the one who was telling us all how brave she felt. Her body language perhaps is telling a slightly different story at this point in time. Elizabeth, can you hear my voice? I'm calling out to the spirit of Elizabeth. Are you here? Did you hear that? Are you sure it wasn't an owl? I heard that. Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard that. Like but it might have been an hour. I, I heard something like. Does yeah, it sound like it's coming from in here? You're right. <laughs> yeah, it was a real, it was, it like was a scream. wine or something. It was very faint. Like a, like a moan. That was absolutely fascinating there because um, there was some wonderful social cueing. That's a kind of mirroring of movement, and it's incredible because even though they weren't looking at each other, they were kind of picking up these cues out of their own peripheral vision. Uh, they knew that Cheryl was doing some self-comforting, so each of them in turn did some. And you can see the, the kind of powerful bonds within the group, sending ripples throughout the group. So if they do that with respect to body language signals, you can imagine what's going to happen when they start seeing things in the house. Let's go back in this room. I feel like we're invading her space. Do you? Yeah. Because we're invading her space. A little bit, I think, if she's not... But that's interesting that you're picking up on the fact that you think you're invading her space. What makes you think that? Is it, is it, is it a feeling, or...? I just feel that if she doesn't want to communicate with us, it's because she might be pissed off that we're... She, she just doesn't want to talk to us. She may well, she may well do, yeah. When we're walking around now, we're sort of like being introduced to different, you know, sort of it's characters, as it were. I don't forget how many... They said ten, ten spirits were here all together in the house. Come on. <laughs> we'll go out. This is going to be very interesting when it's dark, this particular yeah, room, because of all the statues. With the group picking up more activity as they move through the house, all the girls are becoming more apprehensive as Yvette continues the tour. You're right. <laughs> You're right. We'll just call out for a little bit and see if we hear anything. OK. Please, if there are any spirit people here, can you come and talk to us? I heard that. Does anybody hear? Please, can you knock twice if you're here? Can you do something else? Touch one of us gently, very gently. No, don't keep saying that because no. I don't like it. Have you got a feel for kind of when we walk around now, what kind of things to ask for and? What not? Yeah, you feel br not as well as you. But you know, like, say, for example, I had a pain in my foot. I would feel like an absolute idiot saying, right now I've got a pain in my foot. 
I wouldn't necessarily associate that with paranormal activity. It's something where all of a sudden, for no reason, you start to feel sick or you want to cry. Just because I had a pain in my stomach. Where? In here. Now, in here? Yeah. Okay, that's one of the, the phenomena that many women have felt. In fact, um, one of the makeup ladies today felt the pain in her stomach. In, in this here. room? In here. And that could be associated with the woman that lost her baby. Let's go into the last room. As soon as Cheryl leaves the twin room, the pain in her stomach goes. Is she being influenced by spirits as they enter the panelled room? OK. This room, to me, is my least favourite room. I don't like it in here. I don't like it at all. But I think that's probably got a lot to do with the dark panelling. It's all very dark in here, isn't it? Yeah, isn't it? Very bachelor. Yeah. Who's done a séance before? I kind of did it like when I was a kid, just like That's really mean. young, yeah, like okay. crying anyway. Are you happy to do a seance? Mm. Yeah. yeah? Do you want to see what happens? Okay. Well, I want us to. What? <laughs> what the? What's the matter? Someone just touched me on. I'm not <laughs> even shitting you, it's not even funny. Our spirits trying to make contact by touching Cheryl. We take a closer look at this occurrence after the break as all the girls are driven to breaking point at Plas Taig. What I am going to do, whether you want it to happen or not, is now I want to turn all the lights off. Can you tap on something for us, please? Ah! Why do you have to be like this? Before I've always been like, do they exist? But now, I, now I'm more like, they actually do. Can you show yourself? <gasps> Was that you? <laughs> Yvette Fielding has brought girls aloud to an isolated haunted mansion in Wales to test their beliefs in the paranormal. They've already witnessed unexplained noises in every room they've been in, and as they entered the panelled room, this happened to Cheryl. Are you happy to do a seance? Mm. Yeah. yeah? Do you want to see what happens? OK. Well, I want to... What, what the f***? What's the matter? Someone just touched me arm. I'm not even <laughs> shitting you. It's not even funny. You all right? Oh. You all right? Why did it touch you? You all right? Are you sure it just wasn't a spasm? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sometimes I get that when you feel like something's touched you and it hasn't... Could have been a muscle spasm. You all right? You all right? Do you want to take five minutes? Why are they... What did he do? Just like that? Yeah. Like a pinch? No, like a stroke. OK. Do you want to take five minutes? Come on, take five minutes, come on. As we can see from this footage, no one is near to Cheryl when she jumps. Could it be contact with the spirit that has brought her to tears? As Yvette consoles Cheryl, she persuades her to go and chat to our psychologist, Jeffrey Beatty, to try and put her mind at ease. Now, I think there's something critical happens on the video as well at that point in time, which is Yvette's talking, you're concentrating on what she's saying, and she makes this kind of gestural movement at exactly the point you feel that you touched. Now, what we know about the human brain is it processes gestural hand movements at the same time as we're listening to speech, and different parts of the brain process them. Now, if I make a gestural movement towards you, Sometimes you can almost feel something happening. Yeah. And I think you were unconsciously picking up on her gestural movement. And that's why it gives you the impression that someone was touching you. But, but how, how, how convinced are you that something actually touched touch, touch your own? As convinced as this. <laughs> are you convinced? <laughs> I'm pretty convinced. After some reassurance from Jeffrey, Cheryl follows Yvette and rejoins the group for the seance. Now it's time for the girls to really face their fears. Sit where you feel comfortable. Wherever you feel comfortable. I'm a bit worried about doing a seance now. 
Don't be worried. It's absolutely fine. I don't. I'm not. Ha I don't think I want to be touched. What I am going to do, whether you want it to happen or not, is now I want to turn all the lights off. No oh God. Not all the whole house. The I don't know if house. I can handle this. No, no, I can. You can. You can. You can. Be too not good. just straight. No, yeah. yeah. We're going to turn the lights off so now. I think I don't want to sit in it for this. I don't think I can handle the seance. I'm just asking for trouble. I just can't. In the um, in the pink bathroom, I didn't have a very nice feeling at all. Like I had a horrible, horrible feeling. Like I was full of emotion. Like and if someone would have asked me if I was alright, I would have just like burst out crying. And I couldn't. I didn't know why. And then when Cheryl just got touched, I thought, no, nah, I can't. As Nicola reaches her limit, she retreats to the taxi to keep tabs on the rest of the group with psychologist Jeffrey. So it's one down, three to go. Before I've always been like, do they exist? Yeah, they do. No, they don't. Whatever. But now, I, now I'm more like, they actually do. And so now I know what they're capable of. And I don't want to be sitting there and hear knocks on the floor or feel something touch me or see something fly past. I don't want to say that. No. Because it will frighten me. So, so you're going to watch with me? We'll, we'll... I'll watch and then I'll... <laughs> oh. Yvette has received guidance from a professional medium prior to this seance and has been told of certain spirits possibly present in the room. There is a squire here. Squire Trevor, if you're here in this room with us now, please can you give us some sort of sign? Stop hiding in the shadows. Come on out and play. Come and tell us where you are. Show us. Can you let yourself be known, please, but in a friendly way? And maybe louder, just so we know that you're here and that we can hear you. What was that? Can you tap on something for us, please? I can hear it now. It's very faint, isn't it? Can you tap any louder? Why did you touch Cheryl? Is he supposed to answer that? Well... Did you intend to scare her? Can you knock once for yes, twice for no? I can hear it. I can't hear it. I can hear it. Very slight tapping. Is that candle scented? Can anybody smell like really... like a sweet... Yeah. ...perfume or something? Yeah, but not you should. Right, 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 right. If we watch this again, we can clearly see the bang coming from behind Sarah, causing her extreme reaction. Right, 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 okay, what, can somebody get a torch? Because I need to see what's landed. I can't see what it is. Why do you have to be like this? Oh, Sarah, oh, why Sarah, does he please. have to be like this? It's just, you asked him to say anything. Yeah, but not a horrible sign. Sarah, Sarah please. <laughs> it's not horrible. That is not horrible. That is just letting us know gently yeah, that it's that here. Yeah, that wasn't gently. And it was something heavy. This is the thing. I can't find out what it is. It really Can we not turn the lights off? No. I think it was me screaming that made the, the candle go out, yeah, to be honest. Something dropped on it. <gasps> No, that couldn't have been it. Is that a ball inside the fireplace or something? It sounded like it was on carpet. <laughs> no, it wouldn't have been it. That's too heavy, isn't it? Well, why is it was it loud, though. It was really loud. Was it as loud as was that? Was it any of us, though? Yeah, was it yeah, that? It was yeah. as loud as that. Yeah, but it's in here. Listen. It's not the same yeah. noise. It was oh. down beside where you are. I know. It's, it's, there's nothing there. Yeah. OK, OK, that's good. Maybe it was him banging. Just... Yeah. Could have been really loud. Please be like, I know someone like the camera, please like the camera. No, it's all right, it's all right. No, 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 no. All right, all right, we'll like the cameras. Have we got a lot of that? Everybody take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. I don't like men. Just take a deep breath. Okay? Okay, now what I want you to do is I just want you to move your fingers right back to the edge of the table but keep them Touching. on the No, no, keep them really light. Listen carefully to what I'm asking you to do. I know you're very capable of doing it. Throw something else or move the table. What is that? Okay, 
feel my heart throbbing through the fingers no, on the did you hear that then? Mm -hmm. If you can hear my voice, please knock once. If you can hear my voice, please knock loudly. Do something else to let us know you're in this room now, please. I'm begging you, please, in the name of God, please come forward. Come forward to this circle of women sitting in this room now. I'm asking you to do something else. Blow the candle out or move the table. Make the table move. Rock the table, lift the table. Knock on the floor or throw something again. Move something else. The sooner you do something, the sooner we'll go. Yeah. You know, we used to get that yeah. through, we stickered. Don't antagonise him, Cheryl. You just poked me in the arm. <sighs> I don't know whether it's my heart beating or whether I can feel the table yeah, slightly. I don't know what I'm thinking. The either. candle's going mad. No. Can you? It, does it me or is it? Do, no, it's, it's. It is so moving, it's isn't it? Moving. Oh, it is. I can't feel it. It is. It's ever so slight, but you can feel the movement of the table. It's like going from side to side. I can't. I can't. Oh. You the, the candle, the candle, the candle. The candle, candle holder has just moved. Are you serious? I'm serious. The candle holder has just moved. Like it's been rocked or knocked. Did you die here? Did you die in this house? Why are you still here? Why are you still haunting this house? It's not your house anymore. It isn't your house. You don't live here. Do you know you're dead? Please. Was that you, Sarah? The kind of fucking thing's moving, man. If there's anybody here, please come and talk to us. Give us another sign. Should we blow the card? No. Yeah. No. Yes. Please, yeah. no. Yes. Come on. Okay. Give us some sort of sign. Knock, if you can, on the floor, on the walls. That's weird. Don't you think that's weird? Well, that's twice now. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that's strange? It's really strange. Oh, but there's nothing there. There's nothing I can't but see. But coward because that's, that's not shit. Me. Please don't yes. antagonise him, guys. I think what we've got has been really good. The fact that we've got the two thuds but there's nothing there is, is actually quite good. And I think now we should we should get our night vision cameras and continue, yeah? Yeah. All right, let's do that then, yeah? Whether the girls believe in the supernatural or not, their bravery is definitely being put to the test as objects are apparently thrown. Our spirits trying to make contact. Coming up, the girls split up and really test their nerve. There was two little taps. I'm going to tell you now. I'm going to tell you. Did you hear them? Was that you? Fuck. With the girls alone in the dark, will spirits want to come out and play? If we see, if you're here, just tap the fucking table. Stop it now, everybody! No. Stop it. Yvette Fielding and Girls Aloud are experiencing a night of terror in one of the scariest houses in Wales, Plas Taig. Cheryl is on edge after a brush on the arm, Sarah is in tears after loud bangs during the seance, and Nicola is so terrified she's fled to the taxi, and the night is still young. With two very loud bangs during the seance, Yvette tries to find out where the noises came from. Found it! <coughs> This is the one that matched. But where are they coming from? 
Yeah. But it's an old, it's like an old-fashioned type. It's not a marble. It's nothing modern. It's something from here. Or so that was what it drew first. Yeah, but what was the second one? Can I just drop it? Was it was again? The same. That's what it sounded like. Yeah. Well, yeah. But that's what came back. With so much activity, the girls head to the taxi to chat to our psychologist, Jeffrey, who's been watching the event unfold. It's been quite emotionally draining. Yeah, because I mean, kind of watching you, I can see that you've been on a bit of an emotional Real roller coaster. Rough. <laughs> up and down, up and down. Because when you came in, you, you seemed so up for it. Yeah, I am. And, and, I so, was. and so brave. So, still so brave. You still, you still, you still <laughs> are. But, but then things started to happen, especially during the sales. Yeah, I don't know what happened then. I just, I just didn't like the vibe in that room. Really didn't feel feel like he was the sort of spirit to be antagonising, to be honest. And I felt like he was getting a bit pissed off with us. And I didn't really want to piss him off. I, I mean, I've got the utmost respect for spirits and, you know, whatever else might be going on around us, especially when you have no power over the situation. Right. You don't know what they're going to do next because you can't see what's going on. And I think for me, that's the fear. I have pushed myself for me that little bit further. Like, I think I can quite do the whole mind over matter thing. I think I could make myself stay till the right. bitter end yeah. if I, if I, mean, I wanted to. I mean, to be honest, to. you've been really impressive, actually, because I've just seen a degree of emotional control and behavioural control. Right. And, you, you, I mean, you've kept yourself in place, kind of, yeah. at, at every point. When someone stroked my arm, I wasn't in a place in my mind where I was preparing myself for any... We were literally chatting about something completely di different when it happened. It, w it wasn't like I was thinking, oh, God, someone's going to touch us. I didn't feel frightened, threatened. I didn't feel anything like that. If I was just in that house um, with a friend for whatever reason and that happened, I would have died. But because we were here looking for it, yes. it's almost like we got the answer and yes. I'm, I'm fine with that. In the psychological state you're in, you're, you're just waiting for any cue from anywhere. You're in a hypervigilant state. Your body's going through all these changes. It's going to be very sensitive to any touch sensation. And you, you were much more wary of something happening. But, but what's really interesting is seeing how you all respond to each other, of course. Because you're in that very, very sensitive state. And as soon as someone makes any movement, you're all responding to it. And, and that's one of the most interesting things, is seeing the way you're cueing each other, of course. Now the girls are split into two groups and must go it alone. Cheryl and Kimberly are ghost hunting on the ground floor, whilst Yvette and Sarah are together upstairs on the great landing. This is me and uh, Sarah. Okay, she's absolutely petrified. I've got my um, thingy with me. Your crystal. Your crystal. Okay. So I'm just going to do a scan round of the room okay. to show everybody where we are. So this is in the long, the long corridor. Okay. So there's lots of statues mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the room where we did the séance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright. Right, come on, I'll be alright. Don't let go of me. I won't let go of you. There's come a on. table somewhere or something here. I can't see what the hell it's right. right. Just walk slowly, slowly, slowly. Do you think we should go in that room? No, oh, it's Cheryl. I can't, can you? I really can't. I'm Ray, sorry. No, listen. If there's anybody in here, make a nice tap. It's all right. It's only sorry. a sofa. It's I know. a sofa. I know. I'm so sorry. It's all right. Cheryl, you've got some steel balls. I don't know what the hell's going on with you. I can't see a fucking thing where I'm walking. I just think if we're going to do it, we as well do it properly. So, you know, we were in here before and you tapped for us. We know it was two women. If you're in here, could you just give us one tap? We're just walking the length now. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's all right. 
it's all right. It's just my fault. I know it is. I'm just fucking. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh, oh, for fuck's sake. Can okay, okay. you get off this floor? Oh, that. <clears throat> I don't. They promise me they're not going to touch us. Nothing, That's the only nothing. thing I'm not ready for no, well, yet. Well, don't say that. I know, but I'm telling them now if there's anybody here. I don't mind you letting yourselves be known, but please, please, uh, just be gentle with us. Is there anybody in this corridor with us, friendly? If there's anybody in this room with us now, please just give one tap. There was a tap. There was a mm. tap. There was a blatant tap. Did you hear it? I'm not sure because I don't if know if it was their here, feet. Please tap twice for yes. There was two little taps. I'm going to tell you now. I'm going to tell you. Did you hear them? Huh? No. You heard. Right, just listen. I really don't want to disturb you. We just want to make some connection. We heard the tap faintly, but if you could make it a little bit louder, two taps, we'd really appreciate that, please. I heard one. Sure, do you want to go in this room? Mm -hmm. okay. no, no, I don't want to go in any of the rooms. Come but... on. Okay. All right. All right, see? What was that? There's something <coughs> moving mm -mm. in the corridor. Who's here? <gasps> Can you? Did you hear that? Yeah. Well, that was well, two well, bangs. Can we just ask you? Are you? Are you in pain in any way? Any anguish? Do you still wish to be in this house, or do you wish to be not here anymore? <laughs> oh, God. Thank you. I can't see a fucking thing. We must be friggin' crazy. I'm feeling pretty fucking petrified. <laughs> I can hear the tappings. Yeah, I'm hearing knocking. Hey, underneath my feet. Knocking? Yeah. Can you hear it? Yeah. Can you knock underneath our feet? Let us know that we're here, uh, that you're here. Please knock underneath our feet. Yeah, I heard that. I Shit, heard that. I where's heard it that. coming from? It came from back down Are there. Are you sure? Yeah, it sounded like it was down there. Yeah. I like it when they, I don't mind them knocking. No, I don't mind the knocking. I just, I just draw the line at things being thrown and people being touched just, just right now. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Come on, you're doing really well. It's the, was that you? Fuck. What Guys? Was that? Are you coming up? Yes. Have you got activity? Yeah. yeah. How are you doing? We didn't, I thought we, we thought we had a knock in one of the We rooms. had, we had a... Uh, the hanging room. A couple of knocks in the hanging room. Should we just do something here then? Well, why don't we do go, go back, back in there? Let's go back in here. Come no, on. No. Come on. I Sarah. don't like that room, seriously. Come on. Come on. It's the four of us. Let's just do no, it. No, I don't Please. like Come on. that room. Come on. Come Let's on, do it. Come Are you on. Sure about this? No, thing, because yeah. that man, that man's hostile. I don't. He Come doesn't on. want us there. He doesn't want us there. Did he tell you? He didn't tell me in so many words, but I get the feeling that he doesn't want us there. And I wouldn't be saying that if I didn't feel it. Well, you either sit out here on your own, oh, don't or we'll do go it. in there. Come on, let's go into the bathroom. Come on, oh, oh come on, no, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> come on. Oh, I'm not going with Amrabel. What's the matter? Take me on the hand. You're joking. I'm over. What? Put the light on. You pissed him off, Cheryl. I told you. I'm, I'm going out of here. I'm sorry. You either flick don't us go. on the hand don't or go. something. Don't go. But it's Cheryl. He's after. Can we can we go in another room? Because this guy's seriously. I don't think I can cope. But well, you probably... I don't understand why this square is so anal. Don't wind him up. He doesn't want it. I just think he's not happy. 
He doesn't want us in here. I'm so, I'm well, he just you doesn't. Now. He doesn't have any respect for women. Well, no, come on. If you see, if you're here, just tap the fucking table. <laughs> Renowned ghost hunter Yvette Fielding and pop princesses Girls Aloud are having a truly terrifying night in a haunted Welsh mansion, Plaz Taig. They've just braved the dark walking the corridors alone, but their bravery quickly vanished when this happened. Let's go into the bathroom. Come on, Rocco. Oh, come on! <laughs> come on! Come on! Go What's oh, the matter? Hit me on the hand. You're joking. You pissed him off, Cheryl. I told you. I'm, I'm going out of here. Well, no, come on. If you see, if you're here, just tap the fucking table. <laughs> Cheryl, you fucker! Right, I'm out of here. What the fuck did you do that for? Having regrouped with Nicola, the girls don't waste any time getting out of there and rush to meet Yvette in the taxi. but there's plenty more in store for these ladies. Our second location this evening is an old abandoned sanatorium hospital isolated in the depths of Cheshire. This sprawling, derelict site is over 100 years old and is almost in total darkness, which won't help the girls' nerves. Welcome, girls. As Yvette drops the girls off, local history buff Dan Clark is here to give the group some background on the place. Nice to meet you. Okay, and uh, welcome to what's reputed to be one of the uh, most haunted locations in Cheshire. Nice. Yes, uh, what you actually see here is the main hospital building. The main hospital building was built in the early 1900s. It was built to uh, treat people with tuberculosis, which back in the day was a very serious illness and a very infectious illness and hence why it was built in such a remote location. Uh, you're surrounded by woodland so you are very, very remote here. So it's a sad fact that lots of people were actually sent here to die. Uh, in the first 50 years there was a huge amount of deaths here. Uh, one thing you must remember, there was no real cure for this so what they had to do is they were lef left here in solitude and had to kind of just you know, get fresh air treatment and stay away from society. Oh. It's a very sorrowful place. One such thing is that if you see this canopy area here, this is the only real exit out of the hospital for trolleys and beds. Trolleys and beds actually wheel down this canopy area oh, here. I don't like it at all. From the main basement of the hospital, which is taken into this area here, which was actually where it's alleged that the, the more poorly patients were actually taken to die. When researching a place like, I've, like I have done over the last year, you do hear a lot of rumours about, about the place. So one such rumour is that in the grounds surrounding the hospital, there were actually people murdered. Two students were murdered in the grounds. No one was ever actually caught or, or brought to justice for those murders. So the issue we have here is, you know, there was a murder on the loose and it obviously caused turmoil and upset. When did this place become inactive? became inactive about 15 years ago. Only so 15 years ago? But it has stood still for 15 years with no one inside it. But if we head over here, I'm going to show you to another location which might uh, interest you. I'm going to show you over to the mortuary. Even Kimberly, the most cynical of the group, is looking very apprehensive at the thought of braving this place in the dark. Right, OK, girls. And this is the point where I'll actually leave you now, at the mortuary. <laughs> OK, so if you follow the uh, footpath along, you'll be left in the careful hands of your vet. Probably the most ominous building on this site is here, the morgue where bodies were brought for post-mortems. It still houses some original equipment. Hello, ladies. As the girls are greeted by Yvette, we have our psychologist, Geoffrey Beatty, watching their every move outside. It's interesting just watching them walking in because they are very, very hesitant to know. Nicola's just come in, and the first thing she's done, she's got her hand to her mouth covering it. Uh, Sarah's doing these self-comforting touching movements. They are, they, they are more anxious than they were in the previous house because they've had a, a major experience there, and Sarah's now absolutely convinced there's something in all of this. Prior to this seance, Yvette has been briefed by a medium about specific spirits apparently present in the morgue. Now she hopes to contact them. 
This would have been the mortuary slab where all the bodies would have been laid out, obviously once they were dead, um, embalmed, some bodies were dissected, and of course the sink at the bottom would have been where all the blood and horrible bits were collected. Nicola just keeps smoothing her clothes down, fixing her hair. They're all very concerned. Sarah's playing with her hair more or less constantly. And, I mean, at one level it looks as if it's about appearance, but it's not about that at all. These things are called adapters. Adapters means they're trying to do something about this conflict they've got, this kind of tension they've got inside. Now, this particular part of the building, um, it is said to be haunted by um, a lab assistant. A gentleman has been seen in here. Apparently, he was, um, uh, mediums have picked up on the fact that he was very obsessive about his work. So he's still here. He's present now. Kimberly's still the logical one. She kind of stresses that working in the businesses she works in, you have to be a bit cynical about people quite a lot of the time. And I think she's still got that cynicism about her. But the other three, I think, are, are, are kind of more convinced that there's something in all of this. Not comfortable, not happy. I'm told that the spirit of a, a woman is present here. She dates back to the 1940s, and she's a matron, a matron of a hospital. Are any of you happy to do a Ouija board? Well, I'm not over the moon, but I don't know if I do. I think I'm just asking for it. Basically, we'll just start off with, if you want to just put your hands on the table. I'll just watch. You can just put your hands there. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Nicola's nerves get the better of her again. She withdraws from the Ouija board and anxiously keeps watch at the back of the room. There's a kind of stillness in, in, in Nicola, which is, of course, a very common response to fear. In this situation where your pupils dilate, you're absolutely still, you're taking it all in, you know that her heart's racing, uh, she'll be very sensitive to any threat stimulation in the environment, anything at all. She's kind of looking around more or less constantly. You know, if, if anything happens in there, she's going to be out of there immediately. You've got to put the thing, your fingers on the glass. The tip of your fingers on there. The best thing to do is just really concentrate on the glass. If there is anybody here, please, please come and talk to us. Use this glass as a way of communication. Please push the glass to let us know that you're here in any direction. If there was a gentleman here who used to work here, who loved working here, please move the glass to let us know that you're around. Sarah, of course, went into the first house with this great mask on, saying she was up for anything. Um, and she's just confessed to me before she went into the mortuary that, of course, the mask has started to slip. Somebody's playing with my coat. Please, sir, if you are here, I know you're here, please come and talk to us now. Can you push the glass in any direction? Let us know that you're here. Can I swap things? Yes. Of course you can. Your back's hanging off. <laughs> Cheryl's interesting because she was the first one to have any kind of contact with any kind of spiritual being in there um, in the first house. But she seems to be taking the whole thing in a kind of good tempered way, uh, a kind of good humoured way because you know she, she's had a kind of paranormal experience before. She says she's kind of half a believer and she came here to have some confirmation or not. <gasps> One of the most interesting aspects of the whole experiment, of course, is that to see the effects of, of all of this fear and tension on the group of girls and, you know, one way they could have reacted was to bond together as a unit, but of course that hasn't happened at all. Please move the glass. My hand's freezing, is your hand? Yeah, it's absolutely frozen. Oh, God, my hand is freezing. My too, my too. Mine is now, but there's a draft from every angle. Sarah, you're driving me mad. <laughs> Why? You're telling me to shush, though. Because I'm trying to watch it move. I'm not. You just don't want to concentrate on anything other than this. Nicholas kind of kicking herself out of the group, and I think both Kimberly and Cheryl are kind of worried about uh, Sarah's possible reactions tonight. You're a lab assistant. If you're a lab assistant, please move the glass. Did you embalm bodies? Is this where you worked? Was this your space? Please move the glass violently. I know you can do it. Why are you using the word violently? I, I want it to go like that. Oh, That's God. what I want. We're just to tell do. him you want it to go fast. Yeah. 
<laughs> Don't say violent. <laughs> What's wrong with violent? It's just a word. If anything starts going violent, I'm leaving. I when I see things that aren't there, I just assume that my mind's playing tricks. When the girls see things that aren't there, they assume that the spirit world's now invaded their territory. So um, this makes for an interesting, a um, uh, possibly interesting experience for them. Although absolutely bizarre, they seem, they seem to be enjoying the experience. It's that very curious thing. Some people like the experience of fear. They like getting through it, and they like having something to talk about. Come on, he's come trying. on. Yeah, well, he's not trying hard You're enough. You're really impatient with him, I No, he's, you've got to, you've got to well, be a little bit more forceful. No strength to do that. Come on, please push the glass. Just push it towards the first letter of your name. Push it towards the first letter of your name. Go on, go on, please, oh, please wow. use all your energy. Push it go towards on. the first letter of your yes, name. Yes, yes, yes. Please, please, Thank please. Thank you. Go, go, on. go, 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 go. <laughs> Come on. I'm trying to get in No, not you. My nails aren't the only thing on this Come on, glass. push the glass, the first letter of your name, please. Please, go. What's his, oh what's what's his name? I don't know his name. Please, sir. <laughs> That's good. Please. Go, 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 go. Keep going. Keep please, talking. can you just move it to the first letter of your name? Their hands will be asked to spell out something, um, but you know, as if it was a spirit spelling out some communication to them. But of course, you know, the unconscious bits of the mind can direct movement around the board. So I think that what will happen if any kind of coherent message comes out, it will be just aspects of the girl's uh, unconscious mind doing that moving. Please, you're trying. We can see that you're trying. Please sure just prove do. to us. Make sure you do have contact with the glass, right? <laughs> yeah, but I still want it yeah. for my own mind. Yeah, Thank you. Go on, keep talking. Thank you. Keep you're keep doing. Go on, Please go on. keep going. Please keep going. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Come on. Asking, Please, asking. sir, can you just it's show us sense. what's the first letter of your name? Go on, go can on. you spell us your name? Please use use my use my energy. Take my energy. Push the glass towards a letter, any letter at all, just to let us know who you are. Are you here all the time? That's Thank better. You. That's Thank better. You. That's better. There you go. Come on. Come on. Push it, come on, push the glass towards the letter. Please, that's fantastic. Just work I'm harder trying. with us now. Come on. Please, sir. Just push the glass towards the letter. We just want to talk to you. Come on. As he has gone towards no. If you're still with us, please can you move this glass? Okay, okay, okay. Leave it Thank at that. you. Thank you very much. So there's a little bit of movement there, but that sometimes you can stand like that for half an hour to an hour and absolutely nothing will happen. So now this is the first Ouija board that you've ever done. Hmm. And now it's not, is it, as sort of scary, scary or terrifying no. as it's perceived to be? Well, I don't want to speak too soon. Let's move now. Come on, girls, because I want to show you something else. They may have braved the Ouija board, but the morgue is also home to something even more sobering. Yvette's now taking them to the freezers where the bodies were stored. She's just opening the doors and of course you can see the trays in which the bodies would have been placed. Does anybody want to get in? No. After you. Do you want to get in? Are After you. you. No, thank I'll you. I'll get in, but I'll get in with someone else. No. Really? You're not being serious. Well, if you said to me, go on then, I'll do it, I'll get in with you. That could be full of disease. It's just the dirt for me. <laughs> It's just a dirt for you. You, you, you would get in it, would you? I'm not scared. I'm not scared. I think, you know, of course, what the mind is doing now is it's filling in the gaps here. It's telling you what was in these trays. So, you know, these are the sensitive of girls. Like, their mind will be, you know, giving them a very powerful visual image of a body placed on this slab. So even if you don't believe in the spirit world, what she's doing is she's conjuring up a very emotive image. You know, it's reminding us all of her, of her own mortality. And these are empathetic, sympathetic girls who are going to, you know, respond to this appropriately. I mean, you don't have to believe in the spirit world to see what emotional effect this will be having on them. So have you, is that the first time you've ever seen anything yeah, like that? Yeah, of course. I think that's what's... Apart from the girls, I have, I have quite a sick fascination with forensic detectives and stuff mm. like that. It's quite interesting to say, actually. Yeah. 
but you can't quite believe it was actually used for that purpose and it, it, it's authentic, it's real. And what's, what's fascinating, fascinating for me is that we all end up in something like that at some point. Yeah. This know, is where you end up. That's the part I don't like. We're all going to be there. I'm not there scared of death, though. So the, it doesn't. It's the, the thought doesn't scare us at all. Just intrigues us more than anything. Great. Well, you shouldn't be worried about where we're going next. Mortuary slabs and body freezers. What will the girls be faced with next? And will Nicola be brave enough to carry on, or is it taxi time as we head into more terror? Can you show yourself? <gasps> Was that you? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Yvette Fielding is on a ghost hunt with Girls Aloud, and so far tonight, they've been met with some extraordinary occurrences. Ah! Why did you have to be like this? Do you still wish to be in this house, or do you wish to be not here anymore? Ah! <laughs> The girls have just fled the morgue at our second location, an old abandoned hospital, and are now about to enter the infirmary. Yvette has been told by a medium of a number of spirits apparently present in here. Just before we go in, just to let you know quickly that um, supposedly it said that there are a couple of old lady spirits in here, but also because apparently this place is known for where they actually brought the dead, they wheeled the bodies into here, and apparently it said that there are many, many spirits that are in here, all right? So well, that's where they died, wasn't Yeah. It? Let me know if you feel if you feel funny or claustrophobic. Did you just open that door? No, there's wind. Where's the wind? Let's go, guys. <laughs> you all right? Um, hang on, can you just hold on for a sec for the cameras? It's all right, they're following. It's all right. Come on. You all right? You okay? It stinks. <laughs> yeah, but it they're smells, they're building it? here as well, so, I mean... You're right. <laughs> okay. <coughs> you okay? Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? It smells like an old piece, but it's all... You know what that could be? <clears throat> I'm not going to say that. Kind of smell. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so I know you what you're just about to say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm feeling. Say, it. say what you want to say. No, it's fine. Is there somebody out there? Dust in there? Is there somebody? I it. just saw no, fucking hell. It's all right, it's all right, calm down. I just saw a black shadow. All right, I'll go and have a check. Just you stay there, we'll check. Um, it's okay. With the girls' nerves at breaking point, their senses are heightened to any slight noise or movement. How are you feeling? Fine. You all right? Actually, fine. It's going to be a lot worse than this. Yeah, it's okay, isn't it? It's not too bad. I can hear it. It's, it's alright. Yeah. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to call out, mm -hmm. okay, and see if we hear anything or we see anything. If there's anybody here, if there are any spirit people, any astral beings that wish to communicate with us, please, can you do something for us now? Is one of our people standing Shh. up there? Give us a sign. Touch me. Make... It's another tapping noise. It's very faint. It's faint. If there is somebody here now, please give us a sign. Let us know that you're around. Talk to us. Make a noise. Touch me. Throw something. There you go. Please knock again closer to us. Thank you. Can you knock two times for me? Okay, let's move on into another room. Yeah, come on. I don't want to go into another room. The group seem to be picking up a lot of knocking noises. This is terrifying the girls more as they move through the building with Nicola and Sarah looking especially vulnerable. No, don't push me. I'll go. You it. go first. No, because you... Come on. Come on. No, you just go and I'll follow. Are you fairly sure? Yeah. What's in here? Because I don't want you lagging right at the end. <laughs> We're all here. It's fine. What's in here? This is like a proper little house. No, it's... Good. I can't... These are wards, obviously. I, I think these were the rooms that they would have been... 
today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're right. Yeah. Well, when it was in there, sometimes I might have been very funny. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yvette is determined to test the girl's bravery, and Nicola is hanging in there. But how long will it last? If you are amongst us now, please, we don't mean you any harm. We just want to talk to you, know who you are. I can hear it again. I can. Yeah. You know what I think we should do now? Oh, I can hear it. Didn't you? Did yeah, yeah. Now I think we should turn all the lights off in here. I'm getting off done. Why? I am not being in here with the lights off. You, you, you've got all of us here. Is you've got security. There's other lights on. Other. You'll be absolutely fine. It's no good it's you saying you'll be fine. We've you don't know what's going to be other. Let's just turn the lights off, okay? And let's see how you go. Even if you do two minutes, at least you can say you've done it. You can honestly, it's fine. Honest to, it's fine. Fine. Honest to God. Those, yeah, fine. you'll be all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll be fine. If there's anybody here, please give us a sign if there are two ladies here. Are you with us? Come on, ladies, if you're here, then give us some sort of sign. Can you, can you knock on the wall for us? Oh, if you fancy our cameraman, knock on the wall. Yay! I want, to, I want out. It's get right. me out of here. It's all right. No, honestly, get me the fuck out of here. It's fine. No, it's an off right. I don't it's all right. They're just letting us know they're here. They're it's just fine. letting us know. They don't mean to hear it's you. All, I know they don't. It's just scary, isn't it? Because oh. you don't know what, what it is. Can you tap on the window? Can you knock on the walls for us? Can you show yourselves? I don't want to do this. I'm being deadly serious now. Can we just see what that was? Uh, it was a stone. A stone or something? No, it's not just a bit of stone. They've obviously thrown it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's just scary. We're asking them to do it. Thank you. Do you want to do you want to leave the building yeah. now? You want to leave the building? Time out for Nicola. That last noise was too much for her nerves. She calls it a day and retreats to the safety of the taxi held by security. So now Yvette is down to three ghost hunters. I just I'm not I don't find it really uneasy in the dark. I just don't like being in pitch black. It's just something I've always What about you two? I mean um, it does make you jump when things move like that. Of course it does, it's your natural instinct to feel a you know, strange. I don't I, feel frightened. I don't feel threatened at all. I just feel like um, I've heard things moving and I've heard tapping and stuff. I just wish they could maybe show us I something more. I personally wish that we could have like just a little bit of light so we could see things moving. Because it seems to me you're all experiencing this slightly different, aren't you? Cheryl's still looking for definite proof, isn't yeah. she? Kimberly's still a bit cynical about the whole thing. Mm. How, how frightened was she in there? Kimberly. She's still okay. Yeah. They could knock on the wall, right? It to spell the name, so if the name begins with C, the Shh. Knock... Did you hear it? Mm. it yeah. I prefer the knocking. So if the name begins. Sure. So if the name begins, whatever the name begins with, the knock as many times until it stops with the first letter. Do you know what I mean? Of the alphabet. So, so if it my name's Cheryl, so if it's say they would knock three times, wait for a bit, then knock however many times to the next letter. Go on, then try What Could you knock for as many times as your first initial? Oh, I don't like this whole experience. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you feeling a bit better now that you're out of No, I don't know. It wasn't very nice, and then, you know... A. Okay, let's do it again for the second initial. 
the second initial I'm losing count, I've got up to 12. What I'm doing as well, like, I'm standing there and when she's going, like, knock however many times, like, it, my whole body is prepared for the knock. I'm almost, like, telling myself I'm going to hear it so that when I do hear it, I'll be prepared to hear it. You're kind of prepared, yeah? Yeah. But, of course, that kind of state of readiness, so you're absolutely ready to hear something. So the faintest knock, of course, you really, you really, really hear something. Do you know what I mean? Because, because you're, you've told your mind to look out for anything, which might be a sign that, that something's happening. Come on, let's walk. Come on. Come on. You're doing brilliant. Do you want to go in here? Should we go in here, girls? Yeah. Oh, can I stand at the door for a minute? Please? Yeah, of course. Yes. Yes. I'm going to stand with you. Like, I don't know. Which of your friends do you think is enjoying this experience of fear the most? Well, I don't think Cheryl's that frightened. Kimberly is just kind of getting on with it, to be yeah. honest. Sarah's, um, Sarah's, I don't know what Sarah's doing. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, I don't. Because she responds very emotionally at certain times, doesn't she? Yeah, but I mean, it's like she's just been sucked into it. There's no like maybe it might be this or maybe it might be that. It is. It is a ghost. It is this. And she's even like calling out for them and stuff. See, the thing is, you become quite blasé with it. Mm. What was that? I didn't hear Did you hear that? No. It was like a. <sighs> if that was you that just made that noise, I asked for you to make a noise, like a moan or a. S Something just got through. What? Something, just something. No. <laughs> Should we move on to another room? Yeah. Come on. Yeah, come on. Let's go down here. And do you think that there's anything tonight which will make any of them leave? Because Kimberly jokes that she's going to be out in the taxi in a few minutes. But do you think she's going to be there to the end? If something touches her, she'll be out. Or if she sees something, she'll be she's out. She's been in that room before, yeah? yeah? Do you want to go further down? I don't know what's at the end. Can we find out? Oh, I can't. <gasps> Was that you? What? <laughs> no, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. What? Is this sound caught on tape the voice of a spirit? <gasps> Was that you? Something just went... <sighs> I, I heard it. Really? Yeah. I heard it. It was really... I mean, we've been asking for it, but it was a real... <sighs> I don't like that, I'm sorry. That's more you like didn't hear it? No one heard no. it? No. That's more like a cat than a human being. Well, there's not a bloody cat near. Not right by my bloody ear. But then we were asking for that, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I was asking oh, for no. a noise for us to hear, and they're just doing it, which is great. You all right, Sarah? Yeah. How are you feeling? Just emotional. You all right? Yeah, I'm just cold. No. Cold and emotional. I feel it deep. What we're going to do now is I'm going to take you somewhere else, all right? Okay? Where? You happy? Where? That's a bit of a surprise. Mm -hmm. Is this place going to be more frightening? A little. Okay. Oh, Shall we run your own bed? <laughs> Do you want to bet I'm dragging you? <laughs> I am really, really impressed because you just, you're getting braver and braver by the minute. I really am impressed. I just had a deja vu. And something's gone right past your face. Me? Something white just went right past your face. Can I see that way thing? Yeah, I'll show you back later. Let's go. Come on then. Okay. Well, how do we get out of this train? Straight ahead. I really am impressed. Yeah. You see that? And something's yeah. gone right past. It flew. It. I just think it's, it's an insect or. Was it? Yeah. 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 But it disappears? No, that wasn't an insect. No, that was an orb. Moving there first. Are you joking? It just went. <laughs> No, it disappeared, nah. it flew into nothing. Yeah, I'm going to tell you now, that is not a fucking fly. Was it a light anomaly that flew past Cheryl's head? Did Yvette hear heavy breathing in her ear? All the girls are driven to breaking point in our last location of the evening, next.
I'm at the end of my emotional tether right now. This is deadly fucking serious. Stop it. Stop it. Yvette Fielding has just one night with girls allowed to question their beliefs in the paranormal. And the events that have unfolded tonight have really tested their scepticism. Cheryl was in tears after she felt an unexplained touch on the arm. So you just touched me on. Sarah broke down through the seance after a number of loud, unexplained bangs, after which Yvette discovered a ball on the floor. Nicola couldn't carry on after Cheryl's experience and had to retreat to the safety of the taxi. The girls braved a Ouija board but were stunned when the glass appeared to move across the board and they've just heard and seen more terrifying phenomena in the infirmary and Nicola had to call time out again. I'm now taking you to another location, okay? So if you want to get in. Now it's time for their biggest and most frightening test of the evening. Our third location, the nurse's house. This eerie, imposing building once housed hundreds of health staff who cared for patients at the hospital further away. Will they even agree to step inside, or would it be just too much for girls allowed? What do you, what do you want to do, Nicola? Do you want to? Sit in the taxi. You're going to sit yeah. in the taxi. You do want to come in with us? No. no. Come on. All right. Okay. Before we go in, just to let you know, there's going to be no lights on in here at all. All right. Okay. So the whole place is completely pitch black. Okay. Yeah. Now there's two gentlemen that I want you to to know, and they're just going to talk very briefly to you now, just to let you know exactly what's going on. This is. Both Steve, security, do you just want to explain to them what's going to happen? Yes, ladies, it's going to be very, very dark in there, but don't worry, we're only a few feet from you at all times. So, Nicola, if you want to go into the taxi, you can watch on the monitors, all right? Nicola's nerves get the better of her once more, and she leaves for the safety of the taxi with Geoffrey, the psychologist, as the rest of the group head into the darkness. Come on, then, let's go in. Come on. It's just a building. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Come on then, let's go. One, two, I don't think I can do this the whole way, yeah. guys. I'm sorry. It's just here. I'm sorry, one step at a time, okay? One step at a time. Cheryl's being very brave. Come on. Come on. And me. Come on. And Kimberly, no, yeah, yeah. Health, you know. Yeah. <laughs> shh. Is there anyone down there? Where? Down below. Oh, I could have sworn I just heard footsteps down there. I've just heard footsteps down there in front of us. The long, cold corridors and dozens of sparse rooms in the nurse's house hold many a sorrowful story, and Yvette is taking them to the most terrifying place of all, the basement, where she's been told by a medium the spirit of an old matron roams. The group haven't even reached the basement, and already Sarah is cracking under the pressure. With her emotions up and down all night, she's finally calling it a day. I can't do it, guys. You can't do it. Where I are you? I think I can do it. I'm just at the moment, honestly. I'm at the end of my emotional tether right now, and I think they're going to love it. I think they're just going to feed off that energy, to be honest, and make me worse, and I just don't think I can handle it. Do you want to go and sit in the taxi? Yeah, I think I prefer to watch you in the taxi. I'm, oh, I can't if believe you can't, I'm bottling out. I can't fucking believe this. Why are you bottling out? I just don't like the feeling. Come on, you're stronger than that. Yeah. I'm not, man. You are, man. It's the anticipation will be fine. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't it's like it. It's not like worse can you to walk down on your own. I didn't think I'd feel like this, but I just... I'm feeling really... Like I can't... No, I'm not feeling this. If you don't want to do it, I think it might just push me over the edge. Oh, right. no <laughs> one's no one's five and try getting five minutes time. Maybe if I can, maybe if I can watch a bit in the in the taxi and see you home. Okay, go and sit with Jeff and Nicola and see how you feel. Yeah. Okay. All right, Steve will take you out. I'll yeah? take you through. Right. Okay. Good luck, guys. Okay. See you okay. soon. See you soon. Really? Yeah, it's just really, I just don't like it. It's really freaking, like, though, yeah. I just feel it's like I've <laughs> let myself down a bit. Because I've come this far. 
I think it's just because you don't know what's there. What's, what's there, there ahead what's of you, and you don't know. Yes, the, yeah. the fact that we're not allowed any light, it's just, it's too much for me. Yeah. Oh, gosh. So, I went down to one security guy, and. That's just great, isn't it? Yeah. Which way do you want to go? School left for love. Left for love? Yeah. Okay. Please, I can't, I don't like this, not knowing where the hell you are, can just this. Shh. Is there anybody here? Is there a spirit of a woman here? A matron? Did you hear it? Yeah. Here we go again. If that's you that's just knocked, matron, please can you do it again? What was that? What was it? Huh. Wasn't it? No. Come on now. It was! Can you hear that? Can you hear it then? I think Kimberly and Cheryl are still in there because yeah, they've, they've built this kind of mutual kind of bond actually to, to explore this together. So. It's almost the social pressure from that bond, which, which mm. is which is stopping out of them leaving actually, mm. and and that almost that's the irrational thing. I mean, that's when human beings behave irrationally. I don't think out of them want to be there, but irrationally they're keeping each other in there. Mm. You know, which is the extraordinary thing. Let's walk down the other end, yeah. Okay. This is the most frightened I've felt. What the hell's that? What? What is that? Like a chair or something? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh no. It is. Wheelchair. Rock and chair. Wheelchair. Oh, oh fuck's sake, I'm get me out of here. I don't like it. Come on. Does anybody else not like it? Somebody might be sat in there. I don't like it. What's I like it one bit. What's that? Hey, watch the chair. Watch the wheelchair. Somebody's put it there. I find that really, really freaky. There's something really horrible about it. Yeah. This is horrible to me. Oh, I can't really go. This bit. Do you want to go through here? Well, it's like the darkest bit. No. Well, if you put a light in there, it's hard to know. Yeah. Do you want to go through here? Do Come you on. Just breathe. No. Someone just did. I didn't breathe. I didn't breathe. Are you being serious? I'm being serious. I'm not going to lie to you. I felt like it was by my ear. I really heard it. I really heard it. What, what was it like? A, a, a do? Like a hiss. Yeah. Shh. I want to see what's yeah. down there. I don't like going first. That's the only thing. Shit. 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 Just imagine it's through the bee and it's just a bird. Grab hold of us, please. I want it out of here right now. No, <laughs> come on, come on, babe. No, I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want to know. I don't want to see them or make contact. I'm out of here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> see them. So that's the first time Kimberly's shown real, mm. real, real signs of fear, isn't it? I've done really well. I'm not Kimberly, prepared please, to scare myself like that. one. I'm not even that. I don't want to know. Please, please. So I don't, don't want to hear them. I know, but I never ever. I don't want to do it. I don't. Did you hear that? Rumbling. Please tell me someone heard that. What is it? Rumbling. Rumbling. Did you hear that as well? That's rumbling. Rumbling, what? I don't know. There's again. That is so strong. Loud. I don't know why I made up by myself through this. Do you want 
you want to leave? I just think we've come this far. It's the lesson so what do you want them to do? I don't know. I just want to do start parent things or start getting aggressive. Not at all. If you really want to go, we'll go over. What do you want to do? Come what on. What with Steve? What with Steve? Come Steve, on. Steve, you hold your hand, will you? On the other side. Mm. Yeah. Oh, stay still, stay still. I've lost. Ah! Well, it's all right, all right, all right. That's two. That's two. It's two. It's two. It just hit me. <laughs> You're all right. <laughs> See, but that's good. She's just letting us know we're here. No, she doesn't fucking. Like no, me it's at fine. All. It's fine. It just hit me right on the hand. Up. That was just two tiny little pebbles, wasn't it? It was it two tiny. My eye. Yeah, but come on, it was all right. It's not a shock. Come on. <laughs> That is really nasty. Channel there, you know, right there. <laughs> Why did it get you? I know, because I've seen it. I was right with you. I was just aiming it for me. <clears throat> is there a lady here, a woman here, who used to be a matron here? If you want to talk to us, please, can you do something else? Thank you. Thank you very much. Why are they coming See, from this, no, this is no bullshit now, like, this is just no They're just drunk. Bullshit. This is just, just no... This is deadly fucking serious, right? Now do you believe... Now, now, but Cheryl, now, now do you believe me? Completely. Will Cheryl and Kimberly fight against their fear and stick it out, or will the supposed ghostly matron drive them away? And what scares the life out of Yvette and finally makes her snap? <laughs> Yvette Fielding and Girls Aloud are in the middle of a night of terror. They've been ghost hunting in three reputedly haunted locations and so much unexplained activity has taken place, two of the girls have refused to carry on through fear. We're now left with Cheryl, Kimberly and Yvette in the nurse's house and they haven't been greeted with open arms. Stop, fucking hell, stop, 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 fucking hell. Somebody grab hold of this plate, I want out of here right now. I've lost ah! It's all right, all right, all right, that's two. That's two, it's two, it's two. It just hit me. <laughs> you all right? This is deadly fucking serious, right? Now do you believe, now, but Cheryl, now, now do you believe me? Completely. Now I've got the fear of God <laughs> running through my body and I feel like a twat. No, <laughs> see what I mean? No, because I've been saying, I don't think if you don't want them to come, they don't do anything, and she's just whacking me on the arm with a stone. <laughs> do you know what I think, please? No, I definitely know that was real. Nobody, nobody, yeah, nobody could have threw that and they come from that direction. Oh. No, I've just got a cold blast of, of air right on my hand. I wonder if we go back and think the wheelchair's going to have moved. Oh, that's a good idea. What are you thinking like that? You're saying, yeah, yeah, but no, that's a good thing. There. No, but that's a good thing to think. Why don't we go back down the corridor? Back down the corridor. Normally when we leave somewhere, she might throw something I swear again. I just see a flash of light on that behind my head. Okay, well look at that. Come on then, yeah? Mm -hmm. Wait! Oh. No! Oh. Hello, right now. That was a bit bigger, that stone, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, and again! God, cold blast of air. Ooh! She just choked another one. I don't know, something She's just... It's fucking nasty. Yeah, but something just, oh, no, something no. just went on my tummy. She really needs to leech us out of here. I'm going to go out now. I'm just, I'm just getting to death and fucking that line. I'm not going to get any problem. Has the wheelchair moved? No, I don't think it moved. No, it didn't, no. Did I move? Should we ask no, for no, it to move? No, 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 Should we go and meet them if they've got the torches on? You want, are you alright to go back in? Only with the torch. How long is the corridor? How far away are they? If that's... It's about 30 feet each way. But honestly, there has to be some light or I can't do it. No, problem. no, more than just that little thing on there. <laughs> do you want to go into one of these rooms? No, I don't know. Why not? It's 
Do you want to go to the... We might get some even more good responses if we go in there. Who are you then? Hmm? Who are you then? Come with me then. Well, move. You move. You think I'm walking in there with no camera on me own to get fucking pelleted, bombarded with pebbles? So you put the camera in there. Meanwhile, Sarah's fighting her fear to head back in. Can you get a bigger torch for you? Okay. Okay. So, so that'll be two. We'll have one big one, alright? Mm-hmm. God, it's cold in here, isn't it? It's the last room for me now. Jesus Christ. Come on, you fucker. Well, just stand in the doorway and I'll, I'll light the whole thing up and see, see if you think it's any good. Now we all can give it to you now, right? I'm telling you now, we're here, so we're all fucking safe with Okay. Have you found anything? Yeah, we've got stones, pelletos. Oh, fuck this, come on. Come on, babe. There's absolutely no point in chickening out now. It's, it's, it's pointless. Can't do much more than what they're doing. There's bats in there. <laughs> there are bats, look. I thought there were flies in front of the lens. There's bats. They are oh. going to oh. die. There's loads of them. Oh. 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 Shh. They've got to hear that. They haven't got a clue. <sighs> okay, I'm going, guys. I'm sorry. I've got to go. Can you turn the lights? Do you want to see it through? Well, I just don't think there's any point in going now. What's the point? Good girl. Come on. <laughs> so, just to, just to the end of the carol. Oh, God. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. Oh my god. Is she back out again? <laughs> Can you see that head? What? Can you see what it is? No. A mirror. No. A corridor? Yeah. Are you taking the piss? Are we going to climb through the wall? No, 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 no. What no, the no. fuck is that? What the f... It's a chair. What? In a corridor. No, you're not serious. I thought what we could do... Is sit in it. You can piss right off. You sit in it? I'm not so you. No, you've got to you've got to experience this. Well, you sit in it then. I'll do it with you. Yeah, but I want to experience you sitting in the chair. That's what I want to experience. You don't want to go in there. No. Two. Oh, I've just had stones thrown at me, so there's no way I'm sitting in there. How fabulous will you feel if you're sitting in the chair? I'm more feeling than you. Yeah, but what oh. if you go? I, 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 yeah. Your enthusiasm, highly. Yeah. But will you hear me? So you talk to me. There's a really bad smell in here, you know. The pattern of the eye movements is really fucking mm. in the weather, but just constantly checking, you know, constantly turning their heads for any little sound. That's scary, though, isn't it? Matron, if you can hear my voice, it's me again. Please, can you do something else? Do something else to let us know you're here, please. Thank you. Thank you for that. Can you do it again? Can you make it go very, very cold by where the two girls are sitting on the chair? Make it go freezing. Can you touch one of them gently? Not me, please. <laughs> are you ready to come out now? Yes. Yeah. Are you ready to come home? Yeah. Come on, I'll take you home. Cheryl and Kimberly are the only two to see the whole night through. As they head out for the taxi, they leave Yvette to fight it out with a supposed ghostly matron. You're fucking joking. You're fucking joking me. The girls are gone and now I'm getting pelted with stones. Woo! Fucking hell! Where are these things coming from? Go. Yeah, All right, come on. Out of here. Come on. Come on. 
As we get the girls to safety, Yvette reflects on one hell of an eventful night. The activity throughout the night was impressive. Cheryl says that she got touched on the arm and she also got flicked on the finger. Now, in my experience, a lot of people have experienced being touched by supposed spirits. And it's something that you can't explain. It doesn't matter what people say to you, how many experts tell you there's a logical side to everything. You know when you have been touched. Nicola is scared of her own shadow. She's scared of everything. I honestly thought she'd last a little bit longer. But the first sign of anything, she was running down that driveway and into that taxi. Um, and I was a little bit disappointed with her. I honestly thought, come on, Nicola, come on, be a bit braver. Kimberly was a hard nut to crack. She wasn't really sure what to expect. She didn't know whether she believed in any of it. We all knew that she was a sort of linchpin. She was the person that was going to keep the girls together. The bit I loved about the whole night was right at the very end because she was shaking in her boots. And to me, when she admitted that there was definitely something out there, that's what I love. That's what I love about doing uh, this sort of work. Out of all the girls, I have to say, my heart goes out to Sarah. I have so much respect for her. She gave it so much. She really wanted to see something and experience something, and she did. But it was just that little bit too much for her. And emotionally, I don't think she, she coped with it brilliantly. But what I love about Sarah is she did give it her all. One memory will always stay in my mind is that right at the end of the investigation, I was running down the corridor, the girls had come completely left me on my own and a stone was coming whizzing past my ear and, and hitting on glass. That was very frightening and I just had to get out. The highlights for me were just watching four girls deteriorate. They started off all quite cocky, quite sort of um, not knowing what to expect um, and watching them one by one sort of climbing into that taxi and wanting the reassurance uh, from Jeff Beatty. We changed the beliefs of four girls, and I'm pretty sure we could do that to anybody, if they're brave enough. A fascinating and terrifying night has been had by all, but the memories of their ghost hunt will haunt them for a very long time. Now I want to turn on the lights off. No, oh God. Can you show yourself? Stop it now, everybody. Whoa! Was that you? Now I've got the fear of cars <laughs> running through my body. What was that? I'm at the end of my emotional tether right now. <laughs> this is dead fucking serious. Why do you have to be like this? <laughs> Get me the fuck out of this room! Are the nerves getting too much in Extra Factor The Aftermath on Thursday? But tonight, how do you misplace a bus full of wedding guests? Michelle and Andy's big day is next.